Florida Foodie. I'm your host, Candace Campos, along with our producer, Thomas Bates. Although we Hello. are not close right now, we still feel close via social distancing. Now, speaking of, the pandemic has hurt all aspects of the food industry. Restaurants had to close their dining rooms, resorts and theme parks canceled all their food orders when they were forced to shutter in place. Now, all of that ended up falling back on Central Florida farmers and growers who were faced with the prospect of their crops going unharvested and just rotting. To talk to us more about those challenges and how his business was able to overcome them, we are joined today by Daniel Malachuk from Calera. Thank you so much for joining us, Daniel. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And it is Malachuk, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So Calera, what is Calera about? Calera is the future of farming. What's so exciting, you may see a little pink glow behind me here, but we are an indoor vertical farm. In fact, the largest in this part of the world. And what we do is we grow lettuce, particularly, right here locally in the heart of Orlando and can serve a central Florida with product that is never in the field. A bug never touches it. You'll never have some of the concerns that traditional lettuce has, which is E. coli uh, or treated with pesticides or herbicides. All of those things are um, not part of our product. We grow it right here, clean, fresh, locally, sustainably. And it gets into the heart of the market within hours of being harvested without coming all the way from California or from Arizona where traditional lettuce comes from. And it can get right to you uh, to imagine cruise ships uh, or uh, your favorite um, restaurant or a grocery store within hours of being harvested and uh, has extended shelf life and non-GMO, just crystal clear, beautiful, pure product. I mean, you can really see that product when you see it in the stores. I mean, they look, they look almost fake. They look so perfect because you're able to clean them and keep them all nice and clean. Look at that. Yeah, I got a, I got a plate of it right here to share with you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it looks almost like a wedding bouquet. Who knows? Maybe that's your next venture. <laughs> yeah, we, we like to think it's uh, the prettiest centerpiece ever. And we just tell people, don't, don't be rude and uh, eat it at the table when you're here but uh no it's 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 irresistible and uh you know what i'm gonna crunch a piece right now awesome and why you why you <laughs> crunch um so when you're talking about hydroponic labs like what does that even mean i mean i know you were talking we were just talking before this recording about how we have to start wearing these face masks everywhere and you were saying this is no, you know business as usual because you guys work in that clean what would you call clean room yeah, essentially what we've done is perfected mother nature indoors, right? Traditional farming, you have to deal with the elements. It's too hot, it's too cold, a uh, frost has come in, it's raining, there's a deer running through the field, a hawk kills a mouse in the field. All those elements are in your traditional product, right? Um, we don't have to deal with any of that. We've taken a great combination of science and technology with farming to perfect our product. And our team has worked for nearly a decade to get to the point to where we're at today. And we're ready to commercially scale, and that's right where we are with our facility here in Orlando, and we're also expanding rapidly. Uh, we're opening a new double the size of this facility in Atlanta in the months ahead. But what's so great is uh, the ability to absolutely control every single element, including temperature and humidity and the nutrition that the plants get. And our employees, um, the, the product, when you see it, they're full protective covering. So they'll have face masks on hair nets, um, the, of course, the breathing masks as well. And so as I was joking you, uh, with you before the call here is, uh, we were cool with face masks even before COVID made face masks all the rage. <laughs> so uh, our product is super pristine. And when it gets to the customers, um, it has not been handled by uh, people before, which is significantly different than traditional products as well. It's almost so, a perfect product for this COVID-19 environment. Yeah, so uh, even though you guys do do so much to control all the variables, as it were, that normally go into agriculture, you know, you still had to, um, you were still hit with some of the issues that traditional farmers were dealing with when this pandemic started, and just that your customers sort of dried up overnight. Yeah, Thomas, great point. We had worked very hard to, uh, we partnered with the Amway Center, with uh, Levy, who does the food for the Orlando Magic at the arena there. We had... Um, Lots of the major theme parks coming online and all the major restaurants and convention centers and all those things, cruise lines were lined up, ready to roll right when we opened this large facility. And the timing for us, uh, originally we thought couldn't have been worse when uh, you know COVID-19 began immediately shutting down 
pretty much everything overnight. Uh, unbelievable. We're all familiar with the story of how quickly that happened. And it went from seemingly business as usual to just snap of the fingers, everything was closed. So we had to learn quickly to pivot. We had our first harvest coming in at our large facility here. Beautiful product. That's exactly what people needed. Pure, fresh, crisp, clean, never touched. Uh, uh, no bacteria, no disease, any of that kind of stuff that you may sometimes get with traditional lettuce. And uh, we had to figure out what to do because all of the outlet uh, that we would normally go after was immediately dried up. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so, uh, what what was like your your first step? You know, like you were obviously faced with like as you just said, you just had your first harvest. <clears throat> what was happening with all that that product, all that lettuce and, and greens? Was it just kind of sitting? Were you guys, you know? planning to donate or, or what, what was what were the uh, the steps you guys took moving forward yeah from, great uh, losing everyone great question so one of the biggest things that we had done is we'd always been focused on uh, Central Florida as our initial community of where we were going to look to expand and to get our product into so fortunately we had uh, had previously right before the COVID shutdown a wonderful meeting with some of the executives at Publix um, and they had seen our facility enjoyed our product and so we started that conversation with them uh, about the possibility of moving into uh, the foods, uh, into the, the retail sector. But in the meantime, as our first harvest came in as well, we actively got out in our communities and we did massive giveaways with our first harvest where uh, the team uh, got together out with our face masks, our PPE, PPE, and we were out there several different parts of the city where we had, at one instance, cars lined up a mile long and they'd pull up, we'd have them pop their trunk, we'd put fresh cases of lettuce into them. And it was just an amazing opportunity. Number one, to give exposure of our product to people in our new market as we came online. But number two, really get to people that needed our product right away. And it worked out really well. A lot of people told stories. We had some people crying. They were so happy because they'd lost jobs or they didn't have the ability to get out into the market. Or one nurse that shared the story that they worked long hours during this COVID. And by the time they got done with their shift, the supermarkets were closed so they couldn't get out and get fresh product. So we did that very well uh, as far as getting into the community and telling a story. But along with that, we had an amazing partner in Publix. And we had the opportunity to move into their stores uh, here locally in Central Florida. And our product can be found, uh, the Calera lettuce, in Publix. And it's been very well received. And they've been a just tremendous partner with us um, as our product has gotten out there. And it was great because a lot of the customers that we had given the product to fell in love with our product because they absolutely could taste and see and, and understand the difference. Once you have it, there's no going back to traditional lettuce. And now they have an outlet in retail that they can go and purchase that from. And, and our hope and aspiration is to continue to expand across other retailers uh, throughout the Southeast. Um, and, and we're looking forward to having more opportunity to share our product with others. And you're talking about this, this farm and you said it's a large farm. I mean, how big are we talking about? Give us an idea of what it looks like to, to walk into a farm like that. Yeah, so if you get a chance to check out our Calera.com webpage, it has some pretty awesome video on there that shows a little bits and pieces of the inside. We try to keep a little bit of it uh, somewhat proprietary and secretive, but we are producing millions of heads of lettuce here per year, millions. all on the roof, millions. And what's so amazing about it is we only use about 3% of the water of traditional farming. Um, so instead of all that rain that hits and runs off or sprinklers that are shooting water all over the place, we recycle the water, goes right back to the roots of the plant, gets that product right to the customer fresh. But um, the minute that a product is harvested, as soon as we take it out, the new plants go right back in. So we're about 400 times more effective for square foot in farming than traditional farming. And so year round, we don't miss a beat. We harvest every single day and therefore um, it's way more efficient than traditional farming where in order to even get the soil to be able to have a plant to go back into it you have to dump all kinds of fertilizers into it and it's just uh, like i said the future farming and how long does it take to grow you know your like like one full harvest i know it's it's pretty much continuous but i mean how long does it normally take to grow let's say a head of lettuce from seed to these beautiful plants right here it is 41 days 41 days. Uh, is there different types of uh, kind of times for different, because I, I went on your website, I, I didn't realize how many different types of lettuce and colors you can you could have. Yeah, great question. So I'm angling down a little bit here to see kind of our, our unique offering of different products, but 
all of these are on about the same schedule. They take right around that 41 days from, uh, from start to harvest. And we've got uh, romaine lettuce here. We've got uh, frisee. We have uh, Calera Crunch, which is the most incredible product for burgers and sandwiches. It makes a big crispy crunch when you eat it. And the baby romaine is this deep green one here. We have some uh, red oak lettuce. Um, and then we also have some uh, frisee and some bib, which is fantastic for wraps, making lettuce wraps and other types of things. But yeah, all right around that 41 day from seed to harvest. So <clears throat> now that uh, Florida is starting to move into like the reopening phase and, um, uh, you know, a lot of restaurants, not all the resorts or, or attractions yet, but a lot of the restaurants in the area are starting to reopen at least to like a 50% capacity. Uh, are you guys starting to see the return of like your traditional customers? Yeah, good question, Thomas. So we're, we're blessed to start seeing more in the suburbs, right, in your traditional, um, I'll call them non-touristy areas. Those folks are coming back online. I think we're seeing it a little bit slower on the iDrive area. And, uh, you know, obviously with the theme park starting to open up back here in the middle of June and then hopefully early July, we'll start to see that pick back up. We're really excited about the cruise line industry coming back online here in early August because our product is perfect for the cruise lines. Um, as you can think, they're probably getting product that's already a couple of weeks old sometimes by the time it gets there. But what's so great about our product is they'll get it on the ship within a day of harvest and they can go on a seven or 13 day cruise and our product still looks amazing. So all those folks are coming back online. We're eager to be there as they open back up. It's slow, but sure. Um, we talk with a lot of restaurant owners. Um, some of our friends here in Central Florida, Tavisat Group, for example, in the Lake Nona area, they have uh, a restaurant collection with a lot of great restaurants. They're open to the restaurant back today, and you can find all of our lettuce in their um, restaurant group uh, in that Lake Nona area coming on board. And we're just excited every week. It seems like we're getting a little bit more momentum. Um, and I would think in the next uh, several months ahead, hopefully we move back to uh, normal. Is there like... Um... You know, insofar as do you have a, a, like a benchmark as far as when you'll you'll feel more, you know, comfortable from where you were to, to where you are now and, and, you know, where you, is there something you want to get back to that or are you guys comfortable as is and, and everything else just kind of kind of be, you know, gravy on top of that? Well, a great question. So we're, we're trying to get back into 100% production on our side right now. Uh, we're, we're graduating or gradually rather increasing with the increased volume of demand. Um, that could change overnight if we land another large retail customer, for example. Um, but we're, we're gradually ramping up uh, production and we'll get back to 100%, uh, hopefully sooner rather than possible. But we're ready to go. And for us, it's an easy process. But um, we're not there yet. And, you know, I think that's part of what we're all in this together with this uh, COVID-19 is, um, you, you know, from where we were to where we want to be, we're, we're not there. And, and I think that could be said for anybody here in Florida, uh, mm -hmm. hotel occupancy, restaurants certainly the school systems. Um, but the good news is I think we're all headed in the right direction. Uh, the confidence is coming back. Um, and, you know, once tourism starts to really pick back up, because we all know those of us that live here in Central Florida, it's one of the biggest names of the games of what everybody uh, uses to survive. And, and we're in that group as well, where we're eager to see people to start to come back to Central Florida. Um, hopefully the NBA season kicks off here. Maybe that's generates some buzz here in Florida as that yeah, may happen. Uh, and that's a big story, but uh, we're eager to, to, to see these weeks tick off the calendar where everything continues to increase. And what, what would you say is kind of the, the biggest thing you've learned, you know, with a business in the middle of pandemic? It's, Pivot, 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 right? Think fast and find ways. So um, take what could have been immediately a bad, right? We had a beautiful facility. The week it came online, the week our first harvest comes, and what do we do with that product? Well, we went right to people in need. We have our friends at uh, the Christian Shelter that's downtown Orlando um, who we partnered with, and we get those folks' product to feed the homeless. Um, we were able to, like I said, pass out product to the needy people and put it in the trunks of their cars they drove through in multiple city locations across Orlando. Um, to still give back, to make sure our product is going to someone good. It's not what we had planned, but boy, were we grateful to tell people our story and to help them in a time of need. And then to be able to rely on a great partner such as Publix, who was able to, to pick us up as a supplier to them in this time to get people what they want, where they need it, uh, and we're accessible when times um, not available for some of our other groups. Yeah, I feel yeah, like pivot I mean, is the pivot. best 
is the best kind of thing for anybody during during a pandemic. You just kind of have to roll the punches and get creative. I feel I feel like a lot of people, whether if they've been stuck at home or they own their own business, they just had to figure it out and 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 get creative and pivot, which is which is so great that you guys were able to do that and survive that. And um, with that being being said, well, what kind of advice would, would you have for you know fellow growers, you know people who are kind of hitting those hard times? Yeah, um, good question. I think one of the most challenging things in in produce industry specifically is uh, you know there's always ups and downs and, and survival sometimes of uh, the fittest, and it's it's tough to to go through those and you know try to keep your workforce motivated as well as employed. Um, to make sure your product that you're working so hard to grow uh, goes into good hands. And unfortunately, you know, we, we've been blessed that we've not had to um, not have any of our product go to great use. But I know that's not a, a lot of the stories um, that you've seen where there are several farmers that have had to till their product into the field. And, and that's just unfortunate. Uh, but we'll get through this. Uh, confident that the, the future is bright for not only Calera and, and Plan Foley attended with our lights here behind us, but for um, the future of fresh, local, clean, sustainable, healthy food. Uh, out of COVID-19, one of the positives that I think that's gonna happen is people hopefully become more and more in tune with the fact that they wanna eat product like Calera. That is safe and fresh and local and not gone through the rigors of product that's come all the way across the country, grown out in fields and has so many different people touch it along the way before they actually get it. And, and so I think if you can be optimistic uh, about all the wonderful things that maybe we learned from COVID, and, and I guess it's, um, I always try to be positive and look on the bright side as, as uh, you know, I think there, there is a lot that we can learn, right? In tough times, you either get stronger um, and also as well as hopefully learn or, or you know, perhaps succumb. But uh, I think we'll all hopefully get stronger as a result of the things that we've gone through. Uh, out of curiosity, given that you guys are very unique in, in how you grow things, it's, it's, you know, it's all like clean room growing, kind of similar to, you know, like microchip manufacturing, I guess would be the only parallel I can think of. <laughs> Have you guys had any issues with like securing PPE that you would normally new, need for your, just your, your everyday operations? Tom, is very insightful question. Right back in middle of March, you know, so right, we have our employees wear full gown suits and gloves as well as face masks and hairnets and everything as well, glasses. So uh, as I mentioned, we made all that cool before COVID made it cool. But yeah, there was about a, a three week period there where uh, fortunately we had supply, but we were concerned that we were going to run through all of our equipment before we could get our hands on some more. Um, just because everything got wiped out so quickly. And, and I don't think anybody could have imagined the, uh, the massive run that face masks and uh, gloves, for example, went through. But we, we had the challenge, we sourced it, we never actually ran out. But um, toilet paper, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, and you guys never had to really kind of shut down because you pretty much have been, you were, you were pretty much doing what we all needed to do anyway. I'm guessing, right? So production could just keep going. That's right. Yeah, there was there was some time where we were concerned that we might have to. We were right on the cusp of that, but fortunately, uh, through uh, some wonderful blessings in terms of events, uh, we didn't miss a beat, and we were able to move right forward, keep our employees working, keep producing amazing local fresh lettuce, and uh, it's it's we've been very very blessed. And uh, look forward at some point when you all can get out and feel comfortable to giving you a tour of our facility. Uh, we're right down the road from you right in the heart of Orlando, uh, which just, I think, makes it extra special for us to be here. I love how you could just drive down and it's just a big building and you never thought, oh, a million, you know, lettuce heads will be produced there this year. It's just, it's really starting to become, and we've talked about, uh, you know, composting and all these ways that you can pretty much take and give back to the earth, which is so important when you're saying that you're not wasting any water, you're using such a small percentage of what we're used to, you know, seeing in farms that it's just, it's impressive. It really is. Yeah, we, um, we have visitors come through all the time, guests, uh, buyers of major, you know, restaurants and retail food chains and, uh, and our building's very unassuming from the outside. But I always try to- Not big lettuce. Uh, well, you know, we do have some nice pictures on the outside of it and some lettuce, but I always tell everybody, welcome to the future farming. And then they walk in and we have a lobby, but then when they actually walk in and see our production facility, you it's 
over and over again, people's jaws drops, their eyes get wide open, and you hear, I just can't believe what I'm seeing. And I think it's really neat to be right here on Orlando, leading the way in what I'm calling the ag tech revolution, right? We've gone through all these amazing revolutions in human history with uh, medical advancement. We've talked about um, technological revolutions. But one of the things that hasn't really changed much over millennia has been the fact that humans were, since they stopped becoming nomads, plant a seed in the ground, okay, pray for good weather and rain, and then we learn how to irrigate, okay, and then we learn how to use nitrates and pesticides and all that kind of stuff to keep it away. So, but at the end of the day, nothing's really changed. We had to go where the land is fertile and the weather works. Polaris changing that right here in Orlando where it could be 110 and 92% humidity outside or it could be below freezing, which rarely ever happens here. But yet our product is perfectly fine every day and perfectly happy because we can control that. And we can do that in Orlando, we could do it in Shanghai, we could do it name a city. Um, and we actually had a call last week with NASA. Uh, and imagine our product someday on Mars, on the moon, going to the space station, all the more important to feed astronauts prior to launch, product that they know is never gonna have a risk of E. coli, because that's the last thing you want your astronauts worried about when they're on a, strapped into a rocket just about to launch, which tomorrow there may be a launch here uh, mm -hmm. from Space Coast, which is exciting. But that's the kind of thing that uh, gets me passionate and fired up about what we're able to deliver to Florida residents. What was the conversation with NASA? Like, are they, you know, talking about as they're moving forward with like going on to Mars, going on, to, going back to the moon? Is it, you know, like how to transport a setup similar to yours or? Yeah, I can't go too much into depth on it right now, but obviously I think NASA is extremely excited about number one product that's local, but number two, um, you know, safe and clean without, you know, one less thing for them to worry about with uh, those folks that are, are going to be traveling into outer space. But honestly, um, you know, I think the sky is not even the limit anymore. You that old adage, the sky's the limit. The sky is not the limit with what we're doing because we're going to need to feed people in space and on the moon. And you don't have vast uh, swaths of beautiful fertile land like we have on Earth, right? And so how do we leverage technology and science to, to feed humans that are going to be on Mars for six months at a time, or on the moon, or in space station, um, aside from rocketing them up food, right? We're going to have to find ways to grow products where they are as humans colonize other planets. And so um, I think this conversation hopefully is something that we all look back on in 5, 10, 20, 30 years, and, and we think of um, the ad tech revolution and how we change from drop the seed in soil and land and, and pray for great weather to we can do this so much more sophisticatedly, so much more efficiently, and so much more sustainably than we've ever done before. Well, I feel like you have, you're just on the cusp of something very exciting because you I mean that this is what people want. And I feel like a pandemic has taught people the importance of clean eating and eating things that you know where they come from. And yeah, it's just, it's so important. And who knows, maybe astronauts will be having a large salad on you know, the space station or on Mars and Claire will be, will be it. That's awesome. It's exciting times. Congratulations on all, on all your success. And we hope that um, everything continues to work out so well. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to chat. Look forward to hosting you someday soon. And yes. In the meantime, head down to Publix and pick up some Calera lettuce. <laughs> I, ne I never thought I'd say this, but after looking at all that lettuce, I'm actually craving a salad right now. How does that it's even like, happen? It's so <laughs> addictive. It's one of the things that when you have our product, I mean, and I'm going to say this uh, not as a salesman, but when you eat this stuff and you try it, it is something that is just, I've got kids, as we talked about beforehand, and, you know, getting kids to eat greens is not something that's generally easy. Not but um, now they demand salad every day because it's so different. And, and in fact, our customers, if you see our Facebook page or the comments that people have made, when they try the product, it's, it's almost like having lettuce for the first time because it's so different than what the traditional lettuce experience is. And who would have ever thought that lettuce could be exciting? It's probably one of the traditionally more boring things you'd ever think about talking about. But I can tell you when you eat it and it crunches and it has that pure, fresh, crisp taste, and you know that it's wonderful for you because it doesn't have the pesticides, the herbicides, the big carbon footprint, any of the other concerns. And then uh, it tastes as good as it does. It's, it's uh, a unique new experience. Awesome. Well, Daniel, thank you. Thomas, do you have any other questions? No, no. I think you covered just about everything. Thank you very much for your time. And again, where can, uh, where can people 
uh, find your product, learn more about it? Yeah, you can go to calera.com, K-A-L-E-R-A.com, as well as you can go purchase our product in retail at public stores across Central Florida. All right. And rec- and if we do grab uh, Calera, make sure to videotape yourself with the crunch of the, <laughs> of the lettuce. Absolutely. That's part. <laughs> In fact, we just released our first Calera Crunch, which is one of our uh, unique items here. It is this item. Uh, We just released a commercial on this uh, today. So if you get a chance to check out any of our social media, you can watch that 30 second Calera Crunch spot. And the cool part about that commercial is the sound in that commercial is actually our lettuce. That's not fake sound. That's what it sounds like. And it will blow your mind when you try it because it sounds like you're eating the crispiest potato chip you've ever had but you're not putting something bad in your body. You're having amazing flair of crunch. All right. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. Really appreciate you taking the time and talking with us. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Florida Foodie. We'd also like to thank our guest, Daniel Malachuk from Calera. You can learn more about Calera on its website, calera.com. Our host is Candice Campos. Please follow her online as well. You can find her on Twitter. Just search at Candice News 6. And on Facebook, search Candace Campos News 6. We'd also like to thank our technical producers, Derek Mosier and Ryan Hawley. I'm the show's producer, Thomas Mates. Our show is available to download wherever you get your podcast from. Please take the time to rate and review us there as well. And you can find videos of all of our podcasts on clickorlando.com slash podcasts.